what we have here is the controller box. It has our label on it in the different dates that we came and did the inspections. This is the alarm. We could test that real quick. And that's what it sounds like when the alarm goes off. This button here, and most systems have a, some sort of button either inside the box or outside the box, can, if the alarm goes off so you won't hear it, you just toggle that switch back, the light stays on, but the noise goes away. What we have here is an auto dialer. Every home in Williamson County that was uh, installed after the year 2000 uh, is equipped with an auto dialer. If the alarm goes off, it calls me and then I call the homeowner and uh, suggest uh, when we're going to come over uh, to take a look at what the problem was. These are your uh, breakers to, that may trip. Uh, they're within the system. If you have uh, to reset the system, I say spell CAP. You have compressor, alarm, and pump. You would turn them all off. Spell CAP, that'd be C-A-P. If the light is on and you have to reset it, and you do that right there and reset the system by spelling CAP, and the light goes off, everything's okay. You may have had an inadvertent high water alarm, uh, something of that sort of power surge that may have uh, put it in alarm mode. We reset it, everything's fine. Uh, if you do that and the light stays on, then we need to come out and take a look and see what's going on. If we back up, we can see the air compressor. This is an above ground air compressor and it has uh, the air tubing here. Comes out of the compressor and goes up to the bottom of the controller. Uh, if that air tubing gets brittle from the sun and it gets a crack in it, this sensor will activate the alarm because it's not getting enough pressure. So we also take this lid off uh, when we come and do our inspections and clean there's a filter in here and we clean that. Uh, this is uh, what they call a dog house. It's a concrete block that sits over the compressor. Uh, has air flow here so we can still get fresh air in there. These are the clean outs. This is the what traditionally comes on the system. This is the free gift that I was talking about. It's a spring loaded clean out cap this center part raises up it's on a spring uh, if it wants to back up for any reason it's going to want to go into the house that raises up it actually dumps on the ground rather than back up in the house all the waste and everything comes out of those clean outs over there and swings around and comes into this chamber right here this is what we call the trash tank uh, there's a scum overflow buildup that takes place and, it, and it's pretty hard uh, you can see that i'm pushing it and it's not moving uh, they're going to have to have their system pumped out pretty soon. Um, but this is normal to have, you know, two to three inches of scum overflow there. But it is at operating level because the water level here and the water level here is right where it's supposed to be. As we come up here, this particular uh, system is uh, designed to have a chlorination. And this is the chlorine, liquid chlorine chamber that was installed aftermarket. We put that in there because the, the tablets are really too expensive. But as you can see, um, at a dollar a month, you can go to the dollar store and, and buy a gallon of bleach. And it's regular liquid bleach. And uh, you check that every month and put that in. And uh, that chlorinates the system. So the effluent comes through this process. There is another tank lid right here, but it's buried. And um, But it comes through here, and this is where the the aeration takes place that air compressor pumps air over here and the water gets treated when it goes in to this tank here and what we have here this is the actual pump tank after it's gone from the trash tank through the aeration chamber it goes through the chlorinating device and and then it uh, this is the pump tank you'll see several floats in there the water level rises toggles a float and it pumps out if the water level uh, comes up too high uh, it'll hit the second float, uh, which is not controlled with the timer, and it's like an override. It'll it'll help uh, pump it out, and then if it gets to the to another float in there, it's the alarm. The alarm comes on and notifies us that we have high water. This box right here, this is the filter cartridge, 
when you undo this big nut here, there's a bunch of discs in there, and uh, we spray that off uh, at every visit put the filter back in and make sure it's secure, and then we have the lid that covers that box. I'm gonna take a sludge judge test and um, show you what the sludge level looks like. And as we can see, it, this is supposed to be clear water, and it's mostly clear, and then at the bottom we have a little bit of sediment, it's not much. Um, this particular pump is a, uh, a mid-feed pump, and so the sludge level is at 9 inches. If the sludge level is at 9 inches, we'd be worried that it needs to be pumped out soon, but this is only about 3 inches, and the, the sediment is still moving, so it's going to settle down some. So we release that inside the tank, and that's how we check the sludge. When we check the sludge, we do it in uh, about three different areas in the tank to try to get an average of how deep it is. It may be four or five inches in one area, two inches in another area, and zero inches in another area. That's because the pump comes on, it swirls that stuff around, and uh, we may, uh, we just take an average of what that sludge level is like. Um, I wanna mention, uh, again, if we smell an odor out here, most of the time, the problem is with the air compressor not compressing enough air, and you would have an odor, especially if the compressor went out and then we repaired it, and it has to retreat the effluent inside the aeration chamber, uh, then you will smell an odor. If you smell an odor inside, uh, generally, uh, P-traps may be uh, vacant of water, and so that sewer gas, rather than venting out the roof's vent pipes, will find the path of least resistance and come back in the house, just turn the water on for 30 seconds, uh, you know, once a week, and, and you should be fine. There, there's a lot more things that can be said. Uh, everybody has different questions, uh, but one thing that I'd like to uh, mention to keep our septic system healthy is uh, antibacterial soaps and hand sanitizers and things like that. Um, a lot of people have a little bottle of, of antibacterial soap at every uh, sink in their house and that antibacterial soap eats the good bacteria that eats the bad bacteria within the system so uh, we need to try to keep from doing that we need to try to keep from from using a lot of Clorox but if we have uh, a little bottle of hand sanitizer use regular soap at our bathroom sinks then we can uh, just wash with regular soap use the hand sanitizer we're sanitized and it keeps our system healthy because we're not introducing uh, any good bacteria eating um, things into the system. So uh, we're all about keeping uh, the system safe and secure along with having safe and secure risers and uh, if you have any other questions feel free to call uh, any of the contact information on our website and uh, we look forward to servicing you.